Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Smart Connector group and podcast. Uh, this is a new strand that we're doing on a Thursday night. It's called Connection Central, and this is all about how to resonate and connect with your ideal clients. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome an incredible guy um, this evening to our strand. His name's Andy Phillips of Digital Cascade. Welcome, Andy. It's great to Hi. have you here. Hi. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so before we we go, I, I have to say that um, we, we are inviting questions. So if you've pre-registered, we'll see your name. If not, you can still ask questions. Um, live. So it's fine. We'll just have a chat, but feel free to pose any questions you want to Andy and tap into his incredible 30 years experience in marketing and 16 years plus in digital marketing. So what a wealth of experience. Over to you, Andy. Let's get going. Yeah, cool. Um, well, yeah, I've been I've been doing marketing for a long, long time. I've been doing it sort of man and boy. Um, it seems uh, it seems like a, a it's been forever. But I started in the um, in the the IT sector, uh, so I started. I actually learned a lot of my craft in in um, in IT. Uh, worked in wholesalers and reseller resellers and things like that. And uh, we had to sort of uh, we sort of chucked in at the deep end uh, in product marketing because that's what we was doing product marketing so yeah i learned, learned a lot from that that was that was the my, my sort of grounding i guess um and then i started i, I started doing uh, working for myself probably getting on for 20 years ago now um and what the the weird thing the way i started marketing uh, as a as a business i was actually doing uh, um what was i doing i was doing uh, I, it's loads of it stuff but um Digital security was my main my main bag, I guess. And uh, so I had a, an office in a complex, and I was doing that. But I kept on walking around the corridors and talking to the other office owners, and they were, saying, they were talking to me about different things. And then I started talking about marketing because that was really my background. And uh, they said, well, could you help us? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some advice and show you the right way to go and things like that. So I started giving them some advice, and then I started taking on a little bit of work for them to – because they couldn't do it themselves, so I started doing some of their marketing for them. And in the end days, it was it was really magazines, you know, it was print marketing, and it wasn't really the internet wasn't really really up and running. Um, so I started doing that sort of thing, and I, and I suddenly found that I was doing more marketing in a day than you know for other people <laughs> than selling security data security devices or encryption software and things like that. So uh, I just started doing that, and then uh, then I discovered how to build a website via html i bought a book I, I, i've got one here anything so but it was like this thick about html <laughs> so i learned how to build um websites um and then as soon as we built our own website uh, i started selling websites to people and them days it was something like you know five or five to seven grand for about three pages it was so expensive um <laughs> and we built a business around that and then uh yeah just sort of carried on from there amazing Amazing. So, Andy, what's what sort of work are you doing at the moment? What what's the your bread and butter? Well, Digital Cascades really does done for you services, and when we do some other things, we do some consultancy, one to one consultancy, and we do training programs as well. We do quite a few different types of training programs, and have done over the years. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the, the bread and butter is really done for you services. So we do things like. Um, search engine optimization for clients. Um, we do a package which is a search search engine optimization package. Uh, we do Facebook ads and Facebook retargeting. We do uh, LinkedIn outreach to bring in leads through LinkedIn. We do um, uh, anything that's sort of like a package type of product where we're we're going out and doing uh, PPC, for instance. You know, getting onto Google, getting on the page one of Google. So putting ads into Google so you can get on page one for specific keyword terms and stuff like that. Uh, and we also do uh, websites for people a lot cheaper now than they used to be when I, when I was doing it 20 years ago. Um, but uh, they're sort of lightweight, um, so they don't take long to sort of load and things like that because load time is really, really important nowadays. Uh, we do sales funnels for people, um, you know, uh, you know, you name it. Any, anything that's like business marketing orientated, then we, we tend to do that sort of side of it. Fantastic. And we've been having some really in-depth conversations, haven't we, over the last week about all the different types of 
technology and products that are out there, Andy, and it's really a very, very specialist sector, isn't it? It's not something that you can just pick up overnight, is it? Well, the, 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 I think the strange thing is uh, you when you get into a business, if you start a business, like, you know, you could start a florist or, um, you know, an engineering company or a photographer's, you know, all these different things, you know, they, we, we talk a lot, a lot about sort of the property side because I deal with a lot of property people. Yes. Um, and so when they're coming into this, they're, they're, they're fledgling property businesses. And so they could turn into things like letting agents or sourcing companies, you know, where they source property for investors and things like that. Yeah. And the, the, the thing that people don't really count on, I think, when they first start a business is that you can start any business up and you normally start it because you've got some sort of passion or some sort of drive to do that. So if you want to be if you want to um, be a plumber, then you know it's it's you know you go through the training and all the rest of it, and you understand plumbing, and you've got an interest in it, and you've got people skills, and you know all that sort of thing, and that's really great. However, uh, there's going to be some point, whatever business you walk into or start up, that the low hanging fruit, the friends around you, your family, and things like that, have all got you to do all the work for them. All that's dried up, and it takes a very very short amount of time. That's like you know the first three months, and there's no more word of mouth work around uh, and so you suddenly realize that you've got to go and get people that don't know you to phone you up and buy stuff you know? <laughs> and that suddenly realization is oh my god i don't know anything about marketing i don't know what to do i don't know how to use social media i've no idea how to use email marketing or, you know or I've, that most people haven't even heard of sales funnels when they first go into a business because why would they it's not their business. It's not what they do. Exactly. So that's when businesses tend to come to us. We, they'll um, it'll either be when they've – it's sort of two, two different types of people. They're, they're either people who have just started up and they just go, I need to find out something, and somehow they were pointed our way. You know, someone would have said, well, you know, Andy's done stuff for us. Go and have a chat with Andy. Or it would be um, – marketing that we've done uh whether it's um you know sort of uh, lives into facebook or uh get, getting people into our group which we try and do as much as possible um or you know just any, any sort of way of just reaching out to as many people as we possibly can and they come to us and, and of course they don't know us then so that's when we do like a, a what we call a discovery call just to find out a little bit about them as a business they find a little bit more about us We've got a lot of information out there and we've got a lot of stuff online. So what tends to happen is most of the time people come to us and they've seen videos that we've done or they've they've, um, they've come through a group that has uh, sub sort of supported us. You know, they, they bring us on and uh, we're part of the crew, so so to speak. So they get to know us that way. Um, it's like, you know, we, we do uh, like a Friday morning marketing into um, – into uh, into the pin community the property investors network community we do friday morning marketing yeah that. And consequently we just get seen so our visibility goes up people get to know us and and hopefully like us and trust us enough to at least give us a call if they're they're at a point where they really need to market something they can give us a call and we're not big selly selly people you know we don't sort of thrust something down someone's throat we're just find out if we're the right company for them because at the end of the day we've got to do the work and we've got to work with those people um and, you know you can only work with people that you like you know that oh. actually want to get out and do something you know action takers there you know if you ask them to you know for a photograph a photograph comes and things like that because a lot of times people sort of go well you market it and it's like ah, no we we'll, we help you market your business we show you how to do it you know I've, I've said to you quite a lot of times that you know marketing is sort of 80 percent psychology and 20 percent technology Technology is really important. We can have a little chat about some of the things we do with technology and stuff, but it's mindset. It's the way you think. You have to think. When if you're a business owner, you have to think of, of becoming a marketer and having the mindset of a marketer. You need to understand your clients really, really well. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we talk a lot about things like um, uh, customer profiles. Mm -hmm. the most customers, or sorry, most business owners build a product and try and sell a product. What we try and do is help people to sort of think of it in, in a slightly different way. 
first if you're if you're starting up in business now and you're you've got a great idea and you think you can put together a really good product stop at that point and do what i call a customer profile and what we all call a customer profile um an ideal customer profile on icp is essential you sit down you work out who your ideal customer is who's the who is the best person to buy the sort of products that you want to sell uh, and if you can do that, you actually sit down and you think about that person in quite a granular way. And by that, I mean, you actually put some sort of personality to your ideal customer. In fact, what we tend to do is we give them a name. Um, we might even take a, a photograph off the internet, just like find a picture that sort of fits it. So we psychologically in ourselves, we're talking to that person. So for instance, if you're... Um, if you're a yoga instructor and, you, and you've just created a, a product for uh, young mums, you know, or young mums to be yoga classes or something like that, then your client is a specific type of person. A, they're going to be female of a certain age, certain you know, uh, financial bracket, probably living in a, in, a, in a certain area, you know, your local area. So straight away, you're focusing all your energies onto that type of person. So you wouldn't be talking to me. You wouldn't be using my language. You know, you'll be talking to those people and the words and phrases that they're familiar with and they use. So straight away, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to sell to this specific type of person and everything that I do. So if I write an email to them, I'm writing to Jill 32, you know, or 22 or whatever it is, you know, whatever your your, your framework is. Same as if you're talking to um, IT managers. IT managers could be of either sex. But they're always of a certain type. They're always, you know, pedantic. They, they're they're normally terrified <laughs> of losing the their jobs, you know. <laughs> but they're terrified of, of of falling behind in technology. And when I was selling to those people, when I was in the IT trade, um, I was selling to IT directors and IT managers, and I knew that their their pain point was they're terrified of falling behind in technology. So I used that every single time I could. I used whenever I spoke to them. I was saying, have you got the latest latest stuff? Do you know that you know your big, biggest competitor is probably using this bridge or this router? <laughs> and they go, well, tell me more about what that is straight away. All, all you're doing, you're doing exactly the same thing. If you if you understand your client, you can then start thinking about what products. If from the, if you know their fears, what they're actually worried about. So it could be a weight loss thing. It could be you know just it, it could be selling mindset stuff. So what's those? What are those people's biggest fears? And you can create products that solve those biggest fears. And that's the business you should be in. That's the products you should be creating. And consequently, if you're doing that, advertising that stuff is a lot easier. If there's a disconnect between the two, it's really difficult to pull back and reassess everything and redo everything. Um, so that you know, this one of the biggest things is like you know, understanding your customer probably better than they do themselves. So we, we've got a question that's that's come through, um, Andy, which is, um, should you do what you love? And what do you think about that? Do what you love. Is do what you love a viable business? Yes. My, my gut feeling is, yes, if you can do if you can if you can work in the area of life that you love the most, then you've cracked it, you know, Um the only problem and the only caveat to that is that if the thing that you love doesn't make money, so for instance, if there is there's no if you look around you and you look at the businesses that do the things that you do, if there's lots of them and they're quite big and they're making good money, then there's money in them hills. And if you do it, okay. all you gotta do is find your uniqueness. Um, and market your uniqueness and you know there's a it's a money game you know you know there's there's money in that 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 genre that that niche if you see that there's no one out there no one making money at it and it doesn't matter how much you love it you're not going to make any money out of it you know unless you've got something completely unique and that is very very rare you know if you've got something very unique that's going to solve a problem that people actually genuinely have but they don't know they have it um, but that's pretty rare. So, you, you know, one of the things we say to people, if they're, if they're thinking about starting a new business and they don't really know quite what it is, go on to something like, I don't know, Amazon. 
and put in, you know, search for your niche. If there's lots of books with lots of gurus who make lots of money, then you know that there's money in there. And all you have to do is find a unique way of packaging that up to solve the same sort of problems. Um, it's a bit the same sort of thing as, you know, when people say that I'm in a saturated marketplace. Uh, I don't actually believe people are in a saturated marketplace because everybody has a unique spin. And if they if they don't have a unique spin, you can sit down and think, what could be that uniqueness about me? What makes me different to everybody else? So instead of competing with, I don't know, a thousand people, yes, that you that's your perception. You know, if you go into well-being, for instance, um, which is, you know, it is a saturated market. Well-being is a saturated market. But because there's money there, there's lots of people in it. So you, if you think I'm, re I'm really passionate about well-being, but I, I, but I just see all these people, and there's big names in this game, you know. So Absolutely. I'm never going to make any money. I mean, no one's ever going to listen to me. Well, that's not true because what you would do is you'd say, okay, what I want to do this, and, I, and I'm going to teach some of the same sort of things, but I have a very unique structure to this. So I can help people because my my structure is much better than the next person. So you've really only got to be better than the few people around you rather than the hundreds or thousands of people in that same niche you just got to be better than the few that you're actually competing against in that so it's much easier to be better than those people um i just i just think it's so there's there's no such thing as a saturated market it's just your perception and it, again it goes back to that concept of mindset marketing mindset you know as i said right at the beginning of this the you know, marketing is 80% psychology and 20% technology. We put technology on one side, it's just a tool to use. The psychology is not just uh, understanding your client, understanding the psychology of your client, because you do need to understand that. And if you can read a bit about, a little bit about client psychology, it's, it's going to be to your benefit in your marketing. Uh, but it's also beating your own brain. You know, the, it can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Because it, like, it's like the saturated market thing. If you think there's a saturated market and there's no way out of it, guess what? There's no way out of it. It is, good, it is a saturated market and you'll never beat it. But if you think it can't be saturated market, I must have something unique to offer, then you'll discover your uniqueness. And if you can package that uniqueness and, and, and talk about the benefits of that uniqueness, this is another key thing is benefits, um, then you, you'll, you'll do well. You'll make you'll make money, you'll, uh, you'll become a face, a name, you'll be get known, you'll become more visible. And so that's all marketing is, just become more visible to the target audience. It's all about having a, a good product. And marketing is just about getting eyeballs on the product. If a product sells and, it's, and it sells intrinsically via itself, then marketing is just getting eyeballs on that product because you will sell more. It's really that simple. That's really interesting, Andy. So sometimes I listen to this podcast by Amy Porterfield. I don't know if you if you know of her. And I heard somebody and I wasn't sure whether it was on her podcast or maybe somebody else's podcast, but it was about hyper niche and about um, this woman who had a hobby, which was um, something like crocheting or something kind of like quite a minority hobby. And you think, how could anybody make money um, from at scale and doing a podcast or doing a course or a membership site or something on crocheting? And this woman absolutely smashed it. She was in the US. And do you think that the rules have changed today? Do you think the game's changed and that no matter what you do, there is a market? It's just a question of actually finding it. Yeah, I, I think that's there is a truth in that. I think it's um, if you're if you're uh, listening to this and a don't know what to do to make money as a business, um, I think it's it's a little bit of a sort of a dangerous path to go down because you you can't make money in every niche. You know, it just it there it, it you just can't. Yeah, you know, we've it's sort of been proven time and time again. However. Um, with someone like that, what's what sounds like is happening. I mean, I don't know, I don't know the woman, but what sounds like happening is that um, she's done something and she sold a few, and the word got out, and 
she then sort of, you know, was probably asked about it and the word got out a little bit more and small people bought something, you know. Yes, that can happen. And if you, it, but that's, sometimes that's more luck than judgment. And I think what we need to do is we need to sort of uh, try and eradicate some of the luck and, and put more of the judgment in place. And so you ha that's why I say you have to go and find things like, you know, go onto Amazon and find out what's actually selling out there. As long as you, as long as it's something you enjoy, I actually, you know, see, I, 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 I've never really done a job that I didn't like, that I didn't have some sort of passion for. You know, even when I was doing, you know, working in uh, IT, it was, uh, I was, it's all about people. You know, it's like most businesses, it's all about people. And I'm a people person. I like talking to people on the phone, and consequently, I became a very good sales guy. Um, so I moved into marketing, and so I had no fear of getting on the phone and talking to people and just finding out what they wanted. You know, that's really the, the, yeah. the key to it. And then, you know, the woman who's got the crochet uh, site, um, although there was probably an element of luck, if she's if she was if she's found a niche that is a little bit unique, and if you think about it. There is, if you looked at how many people actually do crochet, just in the United States, it's going to be a lot. Well, it's 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 probably going to be you know seven hundred and fifty thousand people, something like that you know that, that do crochet and really enjoy it. Um, I mean, I'll just pick that number out of the head, but it's it's always it's always numbers like that, you know, yeah. out, of, out of two hundred and forty million or two hundred and sixty million I mean, people. I wouldn't do it, but I know. Yeah, there's, there's probably going to be there's a market. Yeah, there's probably going to seven eight hundred thousand people who will will buy something if it's got to do with crochet. Yeah, you know, um, so you just got again. It's just you know, just get if you can get the the, the people who's uh, you know get people's eyeballs onto the product if it's a decent product. As I say, it's got to be a decent product. So she created a decent product, whether that's a membership site or, you know, like a um, you know monthly monthly subscription site or whatever and things like. That. That's what it was. Yeah, she just gets all she's got to do is get. I mean, if you think about it, if you, I mean, do you know how much she was doing it for? Was it like a twenty seven dollar thing or? I I don't really know, but I know that she talked about um, every week she'd come out with a different a different pattern or a different yeah. idea yeah. that people could craft and a craft idea. It wasn't. And she probably had a, a group. That, yeah. you know they showed their their stuff. I mean, that's, it's 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 perfect. I mean, if you can get something like that and it works, that's Being, fantastic. You know, to to Christmas or Easter or yeah. whatever, you know, there's always a reason if you like making those fiddly little things to do it. I guess. Well, if you it's, as I say, if you think about it, you've got if you've got um, if it's you know twenty seven dollars a month and you get a hundred people on there, you know, that's nearly three three thousand dollars a month coming in. That's okay, isn't it? Well, it's, yeah, you can live on it, you know, yeah. but you've only got then your only job then is to get keep on putting people into the pot, really. So you, you know, your marketing, you can take you know a thousand thousand dollars and put it back into marketing, and get more people to sign up, and then you get yeah. to two hundred people. We we yeah. had an interesting discussion earlier on today about that formula, didn't we, Andy? Mm. So, how do you grow um, with marketing spend what what's your formula would you like to share that on the yeah there's there's a there's a few ways of doing this but my attitude has always been if you're in business and you have got a product that you can sell and if, we just got to get eyeballs on the product mm -hmm. and if we take you know that sort of that sort of scenario about um you know monthly membership sites for instance if you've got something which people want and it's say it's 27 dollars let's say it's 30 dollars for, for for easy math uh, you get 100 people in there, it's three grand a month coming in. You can take half of that, $1,500, and put it straight into doing things like Facebook ads or LinkedIn outreach. And go and search for that specific person, those mm -hmm. ideal customers, and go and offer something. I mean, you can start by offering some free things into them first so they get to know, like, and trust you, put them into a free group where you're sharing a few different things, you know, a few different crochet designs and stuff. Um, and then at some point when they've got used to a little bit, maybe that you're on their list or sorry, you're there on your list, get it the right way around. Um, yeah, they're on your list and you're sending out some information and every so often you might send out a little email. So it's like, we've got a fantastic little group that uh, it's only $27 or $30 a month. Um, why don't you come in and we do this, this and this, and you can share it with a group of like 90 people. And, and if out of every thousand people, there's going to be 150 or 100 or 40 or whatever it is, what number, a percentage that's going to just sign up straight away. There's going to be another percentage that will sign up over time because 
you know, they've seen it a few times and they've got a few touches of the business and they quite like it and they think, oh, I I might as well do it. It's only $30. What's the the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. And that way you start growing these things. So you take some money from what you've what you're bringing in so if you bring in three thousand dollars you take 1500 put it back into doing some marketing to build up to getting 200 people in mm-hmm. and you do that until you get 200 people in and then once you've got 200 people in you're making six thousand dollars a month you take four thousand dollars and bring in all you're doing is you're trying to build that as best you possibly can keep as many people in there as possible and you can grow it until you're making you know ten thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars a month and then you can sort of bring it back a little bit to a steady five grand every single month and just keep on pumping people in yeah i mean that was very much when i ran uh, my brand identity company in um, london that was very much our philosophy well it was my philosophy because I was the MD, but uh, we we invested quite heavily into marketing, and my God, it really, really paid off. It really did. Um, and I think a lot of people are reluctant to spend on marketing, but as you said, if you have a good product, and of course, you know if you've got a good product because you take it out, out to the market and somebody buys. So once you've had that proof of concept, if you like, that somebody likes it enough to actually put down some money and buy it, then it's proof that you have a viable product. And then after that, um, the investment was certainly in our case, the investment that went in, it paid off really, really handsomely. It really yeah, it's, it's just it's just trying to get exponential growth. You know, the whole point <laughs> of you know building a business is to you know build it as, as big as you possibly can to your comfort, to where you want to be, you know, because yeah. I know there's lots of people that I know that have built their businesses sort of, you know, 10 grand a month, they're quite happy. They're going to put much more effort in. They'll keep marketing because there's always a churn on uh, on membership. You know, some people leave after a while, so you need to, you know, fill those seats up or, you know, and but grow slower because you don't, you don't really need more than 10 grand to be happy and it gives you enough time to go and do the stuff you want to do and, and things like that. There's some people who just say, no, I'm just going to keep on growing it until I'm making 50 grand a month or you know, 100 grand a month or whatever. And that's, it's, it's really down to you. you. You are in control of your growth. Um, but it's, 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 I think one of the secrets that we're sort of talking about here is that it's, it's a really good thing to have um, – uh, a residual type of business so a monthly type of business so whatever that is and it's you know it's quite a few different ways of doing it but you know membership is pretty good because you're actually providing a fantastic service membership is a really good service um i mean we do we do residual stuff but we're doing marketing for clients every month so they're just paying us to do their marketing every single month and the reason why they're paying us is because we get the results that they want and they keep putting money in because they're getting deals you know getting leads and taking them through the funnels to sales so you know it's uh it, it, it's just about putting that you know the more money you can put into your marketing over time the better it is as long as you're making money on the product you know otherwise it's no point finding but that of product course, of course and the conversation that you know we we've been having we've been chatting about this because we've we're actually going to be doing something together which we're going to talk about later on but one of the, uh, you know, the, the biggest issues of all is that you don't want to put money into something that is not going to sell. So it is very, that that is the most important thing, isn't it, Andy? Yeah, minimum viable product. So, you know, we, we've, we've talked about this uh, a few times, you know, when you can, if you can put together something, which is, a you know, a decent basic product and put it out to the people you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, and if you can get them to buy it or buy into it, um, sometimes you can do deals with people that you know. Uh, there's lots of low-hanging fruit. I mean, if you're out there and you're networking quite a lot, or you've done some, uh, you know, a lot of stuff on social media, and you've got, you know, a nice little social media following and that sort of thing, um, then there's no reason why you can't go out to them and say, "Look, I'm putting this beta product together. Um, you know, if you want to come and come and join this instead of this money, it's going to be this money. I'll give you this for a year or whatever." And uh, you know, you, you'd be surprised the amount of people that will come on use it and 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 cherish it because if it's let's say if it's a if it's a, a product that's going to change their lifestyle improve their bank balance uh, or their business then it's worth it to them you know and and you know the, the great thing about um membership of something is that it's easy to pay for it's not expensive and 
every time that we've done something and you know it's it, you you get so much more value than the money you pay every month you know it's it's uh it's a it's again it's exponential value because the more stuff more time you stay into a membership the more the more you know more you're putting into a membership site um people are getting so much more out of it so it's uh it's it's uh it's just great value bottom line yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if a business is established, but tr- this is a question that came through, um, but struggling to market themselves, what would you suggest for them to do to get back on track? Okay, we get this a lot. Um, in fact, the reason why people tend to talk to marketing companies is because they're struggling somewhere along the line. They're either struggling with leads, conversions or whatever. Um, and what I've realized over the years, having done a lot of consultancy, sort of one-to-one consultancy with business owners, is that every single company's got basically the same problems. Um, they just have different levels and in different areas, you know. So, you know, one company might be really good at getting leads in, but just really struggling to convert those leads. And they're putting a lot of money. And I, I spoke to a recruitment company that was really doing that. They couldn't convert a lot of the people that were coming in. They couldn't convert those leads into sales. Um, and it was, it was just sitting down and sort of reconfiguring the mindset a little bit. It wasn't even putting in the the technology. I mean, we did put some different technology in just to help them to, to do that, but it was reconfiguring the mindset, um, to think about it in a slightly different way and sort of pull back and, and reassess what they're actually offering or how they are actually offering it. And as soon as we did that, um, you know the, the 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 sales started to come in. You know people, you know the companies were 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 recruiting more people through them because of the just the way because they they got two different types of customers as well. They got the the people who are looking for jobs and you know coming onto recruitment firm, and you got the companies that were going to the to the recruitment company looking for the right sort of people. And so it was just like a bit of a mismatch in in delivery. And as soon as we sort of sorted that out. And we put in some more um, automation at the back end. Automation is is really the secret to all of this stuff. Um, then they were just sort of off, and it's you know the sort of leads were converting, and they were they were making a lot more money. But it's just a lucky little mindset change, you know. There's uh, there's a lot of blockages, mindset blockages in marketing, and sometimes you just need someone to talk to, you know, mm. <laughs> rather than some brand new strategy. I mean, I think what tends to happen is um, people get all excited, don't they, when they launch a product and then um, because they've got this fantastic idea and they create something, as you said, a minimum viable product, which is just a, a test, really, that you put into the market and they've got high hopes and then nobody buys it. And then the slump comes and they start feeling like an idiot and all of those voices come in, and um, that's when a lot of people give up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And again, this is this is really what we do is we tend to take people back to um, the beginning of things, and we talk about uh, looking at their uh, their ideal customer, doing an ideal customer profile, and really focusing on those people. What you normally find is that. There's a there's one or one or two different mismatches in if if you're in a business that's been going for three four five years and you're struggling all the time to get sales, um, it's normally a couple of mismatches. It's lead generation is not very good, mm-hmm. uh, and that means that you're probably focusing your energies and the uh, the marketing message on the wrong people. You know that's that's very very typical. I've seen that a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see, we see it every almost every day. Yeah. Um, uh, or you, you, your product is not aligned with your target audience. Mm-hmm. It's one of those two things, you know. And if you're if you're watching this now and you've had a business for a while and it's you're struggling with something, it's going to be one of those two things. You're either your your customer profile, or you either haven't done one, or you've made it up without research, and that's fatal because you'll just tell yourself what you want to hear. Yes. Um, we're, we're very capable of deceiving ourselves, aren't we, Andy? Oh, yeah, this this worst enemy, <laughs> worst enemy. You know, because you because you can I love it. <laughs> you, you can build a product which is actually a very good product, but it doesn't hit the pain points. It's and again, the, and there's another thing uh, that I think would be a good piece of advice to give to everybody. Um, one of the things that we see all the time is websites or marketing material that we call 
uh, that we say that people we all over it we do this and we do that oh you, know, right. you, you see that all the time so we, we say it's we, we we all over it you know we're trying to get trying to get some sort of pattern disrupt you know listen to me you're weeing all over it <laughs> and you so the, what they've done is they said you know we do this we do this this is this is what we do you know uh, we can help you with this and we can help you with that and this is what we do and the problem is no one gives a toss what you do no one gives a toss who you are the only thing they care about is how can you help me? How can you get me from where I am right now to where I want to be? That's all they want to know. So the other thing that we do with businesses uh, when we're doing consultancy is to sort of sit them down and sort of do a, uh, have you ever heard of the um, FAB, Features, Advantages and Benefits, the yeah. FAB process, you know? Um, we just remind them of that. I mean, that's been going for, well, centuries probably. <laughs> it, was, it was when I was a kid. <laughs> that yeah. was a long time ago. I, I learned this. And, but it's in. just reminding it's just reminding people yeah, of yeah. that you know so if i say to anybody if i say to a business owner what is what does this product do they'll give me a list of features right uh and i go so what it's a bit like if i explain it in a different way right um I used to work in a, a, a photographer's when I was when I was young. I used to work in a, a, a photographer's up in in uh, in London. I also worked in, a, in on a Saturday in a photographic shop, you know, selling cameras and things like that because I love photography. Mm -hmm. And um, guy came in one day, and this is—I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm, apparently, I'm quite natural at selling things. Um, but you just yourself. <laughs> a, guy, a guy come in one day and basically said, uh, "You know, it's my it's my son's birthday." And I want to take some photographs, but it's going to be indoors because it was in November. It's going to be indoors. Um, and I don't think my camera's good enough. Uh, so what, what, what sort of camera have you got? And he told me what he had a Pentax or something like that. You know, I said, well, yeah, it's an SLR camera. It seems to be fine. It should be fine. I said, what about the, the lens? What sort of lens have you got? And he told me, I said, no, nah, that's where you're going wrong. What you need is uh, um, a camera with a larger aperture. It lets more light in, you know. So if you're indoors... Um, and the cake's there, you know, you need to let more light into the camera. So what I've said there is a feature. You need to let more light in. So this lens lets more light in. Um, what sold it was the benefit that I came out with. And it just came out naturally to me. I goes, just imagine, you know, it's uh, it's your, your son's birthday morning. You've got the cake already. He comes down. you got it lit. It's all dark in there. And you've got this brand new lens that lets more light in. And... He gets up to it, and his whole face is illuminated by this candlelight. <laughs> That's what you want to take. That's the memory that you want, isn't it? <laughs> That's what this can, this this lens can do. That's two hundred forty thousand forty pounds, please. Yeah, fantastic. So and he's bought it. He bought it because what I was what I was what I did. I just I took the feature and turned it into a, the benefit that he was looking for. Yes. And it's like with a lot of things, what we we ask our clients to do is to tell us about their product or their service and what they do is they write down a list of features and then we say this is really interesting okay so now what i'm going to do i'm going to put a line down the middle of the paper and i'm going to put features at the top of one and the other side of the paper i'm going to put benefits now this is the feature now what's the benefit to the client of that of that feature i mean oh okay um okay and i have to think about it because it's a, not a natural thing to just come out with benefits how is, the, how is the client going to benefit from the feature of that product or that service? And yeah. that's what you want to put on your website. It's got to be benefit-driven rather than feature-driven. So if, 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 yeah. if anybody's out there that's got their website up and running now, have a look at it, and have you just weed all over your site? If you have, list them all out, all the features of your product, and write out some benefits and start putting the – and the benefit of this is – I mean, it's a very old sales technique. But it's it's such a powerful thing to show the benefit to a client, where a client's going to get something out of it. What's it mean to them rather than just the feature of that product? That's right. And I think one of the reasons why people struggle to think about that is because we are all intrinsically selfish and we do in, you know, put ourselves first and think about ourselves first. And obviously we've learned how to cloak that in a veneer of um sociability so we can appear to the world as if we're considering other people and we're putting other people's needs before our own but the truth of the matter is 
we care about ourselves first and then we care about the people who we depend on or who we love. And so, you know, it does take work, doesn't it, to actually put ourselves in other people's shoes. Yeah, it's, it's again, it's, uh, as I say, this, this, this psychology that um, really proliferates throughout marketing. It's, it's uh, as I said, there's, there's always the, mar- the, the psychology of the, the customer and how they think and why they would push a button or why they would put their name and email into a form or why they would buy something. Yeah. Um, but there's also the psychology of the marketing mindset and trying to think like a marketer. I mean, some of the stuff that I've spoken about tonight is the sort of secret source of becoming a marketer, thinking of benefits rather than features is just one of them. Yeah. Uh, so just do that one thing and you will change your change the fortunes of your site. People will buy more because you're being more benefit driven. It's just that one thing, you know. So you imagine like, you know, these things that there's loads of stuff like this, but it's just it's you know, I've I've learned it over years. Mm-hmm. Um and and to be honest, learned it the hard way sometimes. Because, you know, I I'm just as guilty of writing features down. If someone asks me about my 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 company and what I do, I'll tell them the features. I keep completely forget the benefits. So we all, I've, yeah. I've got to force myself to, you know, when so when someone says, oh, what, so what does your business do? My brain is going, well, these are the features and the benefit. And, and I and I actually say, and the benefit of that is, and if you write that down, that phrase could help you sell more stuff. So if you say, oh, I'm a wedding photographer, uh, but, you know, uh, but I, I go to, uh, I, I, I specialize in difficult weddings you know well they said what 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 does that mean you you know well every wedding is potentially quite difficult herding people together you know making sure they all get in shot and lights i specialize in that and the benefit to you is that you're going to get the shots that you want at the end of the day rather than the awful shots that everybody normally gets rid of you know i'm gonna i'll I'll get you a hundred good ones rather than 20 that most people would give you (laughs) And they, and they go, oh, that's a benefit. That's a real benefit. It, and it's just the way you approach that's these really things. Messy. That's really, really good. And, it, you know, it's a simple example, but it can be applied to com- complex businesses as well, can't it? Yeah, it can be applied to everything. And, it, and it's just a case of li- literally just sitting down and writing out the, the, the features of your business, which is easy. You, you do this, then you do this, then you do this. You help people to do that. But what's the benefit? And just at the other side, you know, literally just get a piece of paper, put a line down the middle, features on one side, benefits on the other, and write down the benefits. Now, you're going to have to think about what the benefit is and how you word that benefit. But if you start doing this all the time, so, for instance, if you're if you're in a, a shop situation or if you're in a, you know, a one-to-one meeting situation and, you, and they say, so what do you do, you know, or how do you do something, you can list the feature and just say the words. And the benefit to you is, and tell them the benefit. And I can guarantee that you'll get more sales. You'll get more people mentally attuning to what you do because it's emotional. The benefits are emotional. You know, if it's if it benefits their bank balance, their lifestyle, or their business, because they're the they're three key things. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're selling anything, it's going to benefit someone's lifestyle, or it's going to benefit their bank their bank balance, or it's going to benefit their business. You know. There is no other thing. So it's those it's those three things that if you can find ways of benefiting benefiting those those aspects of people's lives with the products and services that you provide, then you know people want to buy those things because it will benefit their business. For instance, you know, I mean, the stuff I do benefits people's business, but yeah. it also can benefit their lifestyle because if they're making more money in their business, you know, they feel calmer. You know, if you if you can pay your mortgage every month, you know. Yeah, that's right, and they'll be able to, um, you know, have more fun with their families and go on holiday and do all those things that everybody wants to do. Yeah. As, as we discussed the, the the first time, you know, impress the neighbours and <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whatever is a sort of thing that calms you down a little bit. You know, the the, the biggest stress is lack of lack of money. I think you know, in anything in right. life, you know, there's always illness and things like that, but. You know your 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 basic problems in life all strive will come from just not having quite enough money. You know, um, and if you can, if you're in a business and you're you're struggling and you're not making quite enough to 
to get the lifestyle that you want. And I'm not talking about, you know, Lamborghinis and all that sort of rubbish. I'm talking about just, you know, being able to get a car and go on holiday a couple of times a year, you know, get presents for your kids when you want to. Just like simple stuff of life. If you can do that, it's like if you can go on holiday and not worry about the money, mm-hmm. but just enjoy your bloody self, you know, which is what the whole point of a holiday is, <laughs> then you cracked it as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Of course you have. You know, it's, it, I mean, it's definitely, it's, you, you know, you've made it to the, to the first major milestone in many yeah. people's lives. Definitely. Yeah. Just getting, just being, you know, satisfied with your life is, is really a major achievement. Yeah. And it's, so, you know, when we, when we're talking to people, we're trying to get them to get to that point and the benefit of coming to us, if you want, you know, marketing for your business, it isn't just the, the you know, the years of experience or the, you know, some of the strategies we use or things like that. It's actually just sort of, how can we get you from where you are right now to where you want to be? You know, how much do you need more every month? You know, what sort of products are you doing at the moment? How are they being sold? Um, Are you getting out to the right people? All that sort of stuff. We will just go into that and find out if there's things you're missing out on Um, and maybe change your mindset slightly on, on, uh, on spend as well. Because spend is a really, really, big blocker mm-hmm. uh, it's difficult to spend money when you haven't got it mm-hmm. but if you are if you've got a product that's selling and you are bringing it in it's it's actually worse to keep it all rather than take a, a percentage of it and and pump it back into marketing to get more sales mm-hmm. you know because then you can exponentially grow and that's that is the the thing so it's it's having the confidence to say okay well i'm getting three grand in i sort of need it but i'm going to take a grand and put it back into marketing because like, if I can just grow it to four grand or five grand, then I can take two grand and it's not going to hurt me. I mean, it really, really makes sense. And as I said, that was the first thing that I did when I moved into this uh, brand identity company. And, you know, they kind of struggled for years and years and years and they were actually kind of on their knees. But the principals had taken out all of the money. They'd just taken out the profits and they hadn't reinvested and they just thought a little bit of networking would be enough. And I said to them, you know, no, you've actually got to do this seriously. If you want to grow, if you want to sell this business, then there's only one way to grow, which is to invest. And and it is true. You have to invest in marketing. And you have to invest in the right, right places. I mean, this yeah. is the this is the thing about, you know, the custom profile. And I keep on hmm. sort of going on about it. But the idea of custom profiling, you do um, what we call demographics and psychographics. Demographics is who they are, you know, their name, their age, where they lo- live and things yeah. like that. Um, well, part of the psychographics is things like what are their values, what are their hobbies, um, where do they hang out? Yeah. And one of the things we, we we ask is where does your customer hang out social media wise? You know, so and and the mismatch we get every single time is is normally that the uh, their customers are all on Instagram. You know, they're a big Instagram because they, they you know they they love graphics and all that sort of little films and things like that. So they're all on Instagram and the company's advertising on LinkedIn, <laughs> you know, um, or there is, you know, it's a, it's um, a B2B company and they've got tons on, on Instagram where no one is, none of their customers are and everybody's on, on LinkedIn, you know, where their customers really are is on LinkedIn. And with LinkedIn, you can filter so well mm-hmm. um, and find, you know, like, managing directors of shoe companies yeah you know <laughs> you can find that, you can find you know thing. media buyers and you know you can find any you can find people who you are going to be selling to on linkedin yeah. um and with things like linkedin outreach with like one, of the, one of the products we do is you can get uh we can get it to like 100 people a day and, and make connections um and then put it into a, a slightly automated process uh, a bit like a sales funnel but for linkedin um and that gets that gets people that gets leads in that gets targets the right people gets leads in uh you know if you've got a, a decent enough offer which we work on with with people then you're going to get people talking to you and that's the whole point of it eyeballs on the deal that's all it is it's just eyeballs on the deal absolutely absolutely so i think the time the time has come andy to talk about something quite exciting that we're doing doing going to be doing together um so if it's okay with you i'm just going to mention that yeah. Uh, so we're going to be launching, I'm going to be launching a low cost um, subscription Facebook group, which is a spin off from the Smart Connector group. 
And the idea is to help entrepreneurs conceive, build and create a product or service that actually sells. Now, this is something that um, Andy has very um, kindly agreed to participate and um, join and uh, contribute to. So if you have enjoyed the session this evening, then please just get in touch. I'll tell you how to join that group. Um, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be very, very low cost because we want it to be accessible to all. Even if you're not making money at the moment, the idea is to get a product or service that is actually going to sell. And that is the most important thing because we're all in business to make money. And, you know, nobody wants to um, be in that painful place of really flogging a dead horse. So we are going to help you, Andy and myself, um, do that, uh, get to that, that place and, you know, just get in touch if that appeals to you. And I'll tell you how to join the group. We have to set it up. So we haven't quite started yet, but we are, I am going to do it. Well, why, why this excites me a little bit is because um, when uh, Jamie explained what she wanted to try and do, the, 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 the biggest problem that I've always, always seen is uh, people who are struggling don't have a product that actually sells. Mm -hmm. They have a product that they've created or they have an idea, um, but they don't know how to research it. They don't know how to make sure that it's a niche that's got money in it. Um, they don't know how to uh, put that together as a product uh, that appeals to the client properly. Um, so we've got to look at the, you know, the psychology of it and things like that. So when she told me that she was doing that, because that to me is a massive hurdle for a lot of people. And if you can get that sort of thing solved and doing it on a, you know, on a month in month out basis, rather than just going to a, you know, like a, a, a training program, which, you know, you, you absorb it, forget it. You know, if you live it every day and you actually sort, you, you, you're putting in, you know, not only getting information out of it every, every month, but also becoming part of a community that's all doing it together, which is probably the most important thing. Then, that's quite exciting. And what I've said to Jane is that, you know, I'm happy to um, be a contributor into that um, just to sort of help people with their their marketing. So when they get to a certain point, we can then move them up and actually get put again, put those eyeballs on the product that they actually created with Jane, because then it means that you're, you're not only got a product that will actually sell, you know, it's a it's a it's a sellable product, which is the biggest key thing. But it's also when you've got that, and then you can start to actually market it in the right way, you know, and actually get more eyeballs that you don't know, people you don't know to see it, like it, like you, trust you, buy from you. Exactly. And I see a lot of people who launch themselves into writing a book or, or producing a podcast or getting a YouTube video series or um, getting really, really good at social media. I mean, I've done all of those things. And uh, yeah, I think it, all of them individually have been valuable. But I, because of my personal history in marketing, which lasted, you know, 20 years, and I, I know that you always have to start with the end in mind. So you start with an objective, you don't just start by launching yourself into something that is going to be a big commitment of both time and money. And in some instances, it's not necessary to do any of those things. In other instances, those things are useful. But that that is a bit like putting the cart before the horse. If you just go into those things without really knowing why you're doing it. So the most important thing, and this is what we're, we're talking about tonight, is first of all, the very, very first thing is you have to get your product market fit right and actually have a product that is or a service that is going to sell. It's, it's needed. Want. The needed. People actually want to buy. <laughs> this, this is the, the, the biggest sort of stumbling block that I see with so many different businesses. They, um, you know, they sell some things, but they could be selling a whole lot more if they if they just went out to that that target audience yeah. and fulfilled the thing that they need, you know, the thing that's blocking them. You know, if you can if you can get someone who's got a blockage. And you can solve that blockage. Well, that they'll pay for that. The, you know, people love buying things. They just don't like to be sold to. Yeah. yeah that's that's you know. But if they if they think this is something which is going to um, to genuinely help them in their lifestyle uh, or their their bank balance or their business, mm -hmm. if it's something which is going to solve a problem, they'll buy it. 
and that's that and as long as you get known you know this is the other, other thing is like having a great product but also being visible um so yeah having social getting on social media is fantastic having podcasts is fantastic you always thought but it's irrelevant if you haven't got a decent decent product to sell exactly exactly um so the final thing to say is that if anybody would like to have an individual consultation with both andy and myself to discuss how to monetize their product so perhaps you're a little bit further down the line perhaps you've already got an established business and you're making money but it's not quite um it's not quite working in the way that you'd like um, we we are issuing an invitation and again all you have to do is get in touch with me we'll I'll set it up and we will have a little round table discussion with you to actually discuss how you might be able to make those tweaks that are going to monetize your product more efficiently um, through the use of marketing but sometimes it is just a question of of positioning and tweaks and actually that messaging um, piece isn't it Andy yeah definitely and, and I'm just seeing some of the some of the questions aside I'm not, we're not going to be able to, to cover uh, a lot of this stuff but um just there's one question that I just I, I see is how do you make PPI sexy um how do you launch a PPI business where everything is the same and uh question again this is the whole thing it's not what you're selling it's who you are you know if you're it, it, the uniqueness comes from the business um the product the same the you know if you're first selling the same product as everybody else then the only differentiator is going to be the person who's doing it or the business that's doing it absolutely you know so how do you make ppi sexy you don't you make your business sexy you make your you know you get out to the you target the right people you advertise to the right people, get you know, get in front of the right people. Um, you make sure that your message is really strong and benefit driven. Uh, you make it easy for them to contact you. You, you know, really genuinely easy, um, so they don't have to lift do so much heavy lifting. Uh, you are brilliant when they when they contact you. So when you're on the phone, you're great. You know, really helpful um because people will then say i went through this company rather than this company and they were much better than this company and that's all it is so when you've got you know level playing fields like ppi then it's all about the business it's not about the product um there's another one here that says how do you see your biz changing post covid uh very very interesting question uh, and very difficult to answer however um one of the things i was talking to you jane this this morning about um some of these things is that uh with with the way COVID has, has made us socially uh, isolate, we are now using the social media side and um, uh, engagement products like this. You know, doing live live streaming, uh, using Zoom calls uh, more than any any other time in our lives. Yes, you know, it's it's peaked through the roof. And what I've noticed is that our clients are saying this is all quite easy. It's like Yes, we've been telling you this for ages. <laughs> using social media, using you know, using the internet and social media is easy. You just got to buy into it. So again, it's the psychology of these things. Because we've been now been forced into doing Zoom calls with family and and you know work colleagues and things like that, we can't go out. Mate, um, <laughs> we have to do this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And people have just got used to it. In, in a, such a you know, in two months, in a, such a short space of time, people have got used to doing Zoom calls. And I'm talking to business owners that have been in business for 20 years. They've never done a Zoom call until two months ago. Really? You know, and and suddenly, you know, so how is it going to change? I think we're going to be uh, a lot more comfortable with the internet, a lot more comfortable with social media, a lot more comfortable with doing videos and talking to camera, doing a lot more, being more, more comfortable with doing live. Live is a really great thing to do. What we're doing here is live. Yeah. Um, but it actually gets out and reaches far more people than than putting a video out. Yeah. So do live stuff you know um just get used to this stuff so well, post covid what's the worst that can happen <laughs> yeah. you know i mean i mean i think one of the interesting things is that we're seeing it on tv a lot so although i try not to watch too too much tv sometimes i switch on um the news in the morning and and everybody is everybody's coming in from home rubbish uh zoom interviews and yeah. 
we're, we're used to seeing it on our TV now. So even on TV, where we're used to these much higher production values, we're seeing people just like Andy and myself sitting home. in home offices or whatever. It's becoming um, the new norm. And exactly. this is, the, see, this is the point. I mean, I, I had something beautiful yesterday. You know, I, you, you hear all these interviews on the radio. I was, I was sitting in the garden having a bit of, you know, sitting having a bit of sun and a gin and tonic. And uh, what, what? Another gin and tonic? Another what? gin and tonic. <laughs> Um, and I was listening to the radio, and there was a, an interview with someone. They were talking about something quite serious. It was on uh, Radio 5 Live. Yeah. And they were talking about something about the COVID crisis and that sort of thing. And suddenly you could hear this young child chattering in the background. And, and the, the person who was being interviewed about this very, very serious thing says, oh, sorry, my daughter's just come in. And the, 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 the interview said, oh, don't worry about that. That's fine. How is she? You know. And suddenly there was this, 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 this beautiful human thing going on rather than, this is a news reporter talking to a, you know, an interview. It was suddenly this wonderful human interaction, you know. Oh, don't worry about that. I mean, I've I've, I've had uh, customers on doing a, doing a, a live thing out to, out to people, and then the, their daughter comes and sits on the knee, and we're waving. <laughs> it just yeah. it, it makes humanity just much. It just people buy people, you yeah. know, and that sort of thing just makes it so nice. You know, it's so nice to know that people are just normal. And they have normal lives, and you know they're just like you. No one, you know, this. If you look at people who are really successful, they're just like you. They've just done some other things. They've just taken some action where you haven't. You know, <laughs> it's exactly. it's it's beautiful. I think so. I think it's uh, post COVID. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be more human, hopefully. Um, you know, but then I'm, I'm an optimist. So. Yeah. Any any more questions, Andy? No, I think that's um, I think that's all we, we can do now. We'll 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 keep an eye on some of this stuff, and if we can we can uh, if we can answer any any yeah, yeah but just keep on putting them in, just keep on asking, just keep on keep in contact, and uh, we'll we'll try and help as much as possible. Yeah, so I mean, the other thing before we go is, Andy, I'd like you to talk about your uh, music. So you're a drummer, and you've actually well, I'll let you tell everybody because. Andy is actually a very, very cool guy, as well as being a marketing, a marketing guru. He also is in a band. So <laughs> I, I've been well, I've been playing music for ever since I was sort of fourteen, um, yeah. and uh, we played in sort of the new new wave of British heavy metal back in the day. Um, same sort of circuits as you know Maiden and all those sort of bands, you know. Um, uh, they made it, we didn't. <laughs> uh, but I've been I've been playing ever since, and still playing, still playing the band at the grand old age of. I'm not going to tell you. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, I've I'm, I'm, I'm been I've been playing drums for a long, 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 long time, and it's uh, it's a big passion of mine. Okay, so if if somebody wants to see you live, uh, where where will they go? What will they look for, Andy? Well, the best thing is to go and go on a YouTube. Just do search for a uh, uh, Vine Messiah. Vine so, Messiah. Yeah, V I N E M E W S I A H. Vine okay. Messiah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Andy. And thank you Pleasure. so much to all of our um, subscribers and, and viewers and so on for listening in to us. I hope it's been helpful. And don't forget, if you'd like to book um, a consultation with Andy and myself, if you're a little bit stuck and you, you know, you feel as though you need to ramp up sales and you want to have a different perspective, we're here. Get in touch with me, and uh, I will also um, send be announcing details about the new Facebook group. So thank you very much, and lovely to see you. See you soon. See you, everybody. Okay. Bye.